Hi, my name is Ryan Newberry, and I'm here to talk about Cobra as a Contraceptive, the IUD, along with my groupmates Lexi and Megan. First, we'll talk about the history of copper as a contraceptive. The first IUD was created from silkworm guts in 1909. There were no clinical trials, so it was never available on the market, but it was intended to cause inflammation of the uterus, which would prevent pregnancy. The Grafenberg ring was the first on the market in 1928. It was a silver ring, which was contaminated with copper. And the Oto ring came next, but it was very similar to the Grafenberg ring, except it had a central disc with spokes connecting it to the outer ring. Eventually, the IUD grew in pop popularity. That led to the creation of the Leipz loop and the Permacoil in 1961 and 1960, respectively. It was developed to hold a position inside the uterus, as the rings would sometimes be expelled. The plastic also led to better efficacy than the metal. The first copper IUD was created in 1969 by Zipper and Tatum. It was a T-shaped design that led to less bleeding and pain than the permacoil and life sleep. It was chosen due to the shape of the contracted uterus being close to a T-shape. The shape was not effective enough though, so they needed to use copper to improve the efficacy. Despite these strides in IUD technology, IUDs became less prevalent in the 1970s. This was largely due to the Dalkin Shield, which was introduced in 1970. It was a crab-shaped IUD with a wire that led out of the uterus. After several years of use, there was a high prevalence of pelvic inflammatory disease in women using the device. It was taken off the market in 1974, and by 1975, 16 deaths had been attributed to the Dalkin Shield. By 1986, all IUDs had been pulled from the market except for one. The resurgence of IUD use started with Paragard in 1988, which is an, another copper IUD. The use of IUDs grew, grew slowly over time until there was a, starting in the early 2000s to now, there's been a five-fold increase in IUD use. And currently, 10% of the birth control use is IUDs. Thank you for listening. And now Megan and Lexi will talk to you about copper versus hormonal and how copper works as a contraceptive. There are two different types of IUDs. The first one is hormonal, and this one secretes the hormone progestin, which is a synthetic version of the natural progesterone, um, and that regulates ovulation as well as the environment of the uterus. Depending on the brand, it could last for three, five, or seven years. So the Skyla is three, Kylina five, Marina seven. Um, and it's 99% effective at preventing pregnancy. The side effects associated with the hormonal ones are typically worse than the copper one, simply due to the fact that it is hormonal. Um, and it can vary widely from person to person, but these might include headaches, acne, irregular periods, mood changes, or cramping. Um, and so now the copper IUD um, obviously does not have any hormones with it. It actually releases copper ions into the uterine cavity. Um, and the presence of copper, it actually produces a toxic environment for the sperm, which Megan will cover in the mechanism section. Um, and these can last 10 to 12 years, depending on the brand. But here in the US, the only one licensed is the Paragard, which lasts 10 years. Um, it is also 99% effective at preventing pregnancy. And just as an added bonus, it could also be used as an emergency contraceptive if it is implanted within five days of unprotected sex um, because the introduction of copper prevents the sperm from moving. Um, and then the presence of copper, again, makes the uterine lining unfit for implantation. Uh, it typically does not have as many side effects as hormonal because it lacks any hormones. Um, but the two most common side effects are heavier periods and cramping. Um, the reason why most people choose copper is simply because it lasts longer. You can put it in, forget about it for almost a decade. Um, it has less side effects, and it's also a better choice for people who can't use hormonal medications due to other health conditions. And again, it can double as an emergency contraceptive. Um, so now Megan will go ahead and explain how the, I the copper IUD works. So how does a copper contraceptive really work? There are two main mechanisms to be understood for a copper IUD, the chemical and immunological. All copper IUDs have essentially the same mechanism, 
though, because the Paragard IUD is the only copper IUD that is FDA approved in America, we will be focusing on this particular IUD. Here we have the Paragard copper IUD. As you can see, it is a thin T-shaped device made of a plastic frame and thin copper coils. Now, let's take a closer look at the frame. The frame is made of light, flexible, polyethylene barium sulfate plastic, which does not interfere with the copper, nor does it degrade in the body or cause an immune response. Next, let's take a look at the copper coils. Thin copper coils are wrapped around the stem and arms of the IUD. At the bottom of the stem, there are threads that allow for easier insertion and removal. Now, let's see how the IUD sits in the uterus. The IUD is quite small, so it sits comfortably and unnoticed in the uterus. Just for a fun reference, this tiny IUD is around the length of your average size strawberry. But what really happens in the uterus? Let's take a trip to the uterus for a moment and see what's happening to the copper IUD. The uterine fluid is slightly acidic, which causes an electrochemical gradient between the copper coils and surrounding fluid. As time passes, copper ions are released as the copper wire faces corrosion. Copper ions will remain only in the local region of the IUD as fluid flow in the uterus is a one-way street. Once the copper ions are released, the body elicits an immune response that is localized. Taking an even closer look at the busy scene in the uterus, we see this on the left, copper ions surrounding their patron coils. Because copper is not an element found in this high of concentrations in the body, the body's immune system responds with inflammation and many leukocytes rush towards the copper IUD region. Inflammation also causes cervical mucus to thicken. Physical hindrance of sperm is caused when sperm attempting to move to the uterus travels much slower through this thick mucus. Any sperm that does happen to make it into the uterus will quickly be found by awaiting glucocyte macrophages and will meet their demise through consumption. So ends the short-lived sperm and long-lived the successful contraception. The copper IUD kills sperm to prevent unwanted pregnancies, all the while serving as a long-term contraceptive with much less systemic side effects compared to many hormonal IUDs. This small strawberry-sized invention has really helped women in today's society take control of their lives.